Hey everybody, DJ from Eternal Visuals here, and today I have quite the extensive tutorial. Cyberpunk 2077's DLC is dropping pretty soon, and I thought I'd take a shot at recreating the Phantom Liberty trailer title. Now, I will warn you, there is a paid plugin that I use during this tutorial for one piece of the transition, but I do have a link in the description with a free option that gives a similar effect. So let's not waste any time, let's get into it. To start, there are three fonts that we will need. The infamous Cyberpunk font and two other fonts for our subtext layers. For textures, there's a glitch background and a city skyline and a dotted texture. For our character, I went ahead and created a Cyberpunk version of myself using some RGB lighting and some Photoshop techniques. Was this necessary? I told myself it was for copyright reasons, but let's be honest, who doesn't want to have a Cyberpunk version of themselves? This image and all other assets are free with links in the description. Let's open up After Effects and create a new project. Title it Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty. Then create a new comp. Title it Cyber Motion. We're going to go with 1920 by 1080 for our resolution, 2997 for our frame rate, and a 10 second timeline. To start, we're going to create our Phantom Liberty title first. Let's start with the background. Go to Layer, New, Solid. Use this hex code to get the Cyber Red. Now let's import our images. Grab your glitch background and drag it above your solid and switch the blend mode to soft light. Grab your type tool and click and drag a new text box. Write cyberpunk and choose the cyberpunk font. Change the font size to 175, color to black, tracking to negative 250, and center your text. The C and the K should be getting cut off by the border edges. Create a new white solid. Go to your effects tab and search for fractal noise. Drag it onto your white solid. We'll be using this effect for almost everything. Change the fractal type to max and the noise type to block. Change the contrast to 600, brightness to negative 75, and complexity to 10. Under the scale settings, uncheck uniform scaling and adjust the width to 600 and the height to 20. Click the matte tab on your cyberpunk font and select your white solid. Then click the alpha matte icon once to switch it to luma matte. Now you should have a glitch texture on your cyberpunk font. Grab your type tool and create another text layer. This will be our Phantom Liberty title. I'm titling mine Motion Design. Choose the A4 speed font, change the size to 150, tracking to zero, center your text, and right click in pre-comp. Title it Motion Design. Double click your comp to go back in, then go to Composition, Composition Settings, and under 3D Renderer, choose Cinema 4D. Select your text layer and check off your 3D layer icon and hit the down arrow. Under geometry options, change the extrude depth to 98. To get those vibrant reflections, drag your city skyline image onto your text layer. Hit S on your keyboard to open the scale settings. Unlink the X and Y axis. Change the X to 154 and the Y to 3. Go back to your effects tab and search for levels. Drag it onto your image and crush the highlights in the blacks to create more contrast. Set the input black to 75, and put white to 90 and the gamma to 1. Go back once more and search for Colorama. Under Output Cycle, choose Alpha Ramp, then change the main color to this hex code. Right click and create a new comp. Title it Map. Right click and select Environmental Layer. You should now be able to see the reflections on the extruded text. In the material options on your 3D text layer, make sure cast shadows is on, specular intensity and reflection intensity are both at 100, and reflection rolloff is zero. Copy and paste your text layer and deselect the 3D layer. Go to your effects tab and search for gradient ramp. For start and end colors, use these hex codes. For their coordinates, use these X and Y coordinates. Go back to your effects tab and type emboss. Drag it onto your text layer. Change the direction to 180, relief to 3, and contrast to 125. Then blend with the original 50%. Then add a levels effect and make the input black 8, input white 72, and gamma 0.65. Then add a hue and saturation layer and increase the saturation by 48. Head back to your main comp. Now for our digital date. Create a new text layer with your type tool. Use the TT OctoSquare condensed regular font. Change the size to 90 and use this hex code for the color. Center your text and drag it to the bottom. Now let's do some animating. Hit the drop down on your date layer and click the animate icon and select opacity. Under range selector then advanced, turn randomize on, random seed to two and opacity to zero. Bring your playhead to the beginning of the timeline and make a start keyframe. Go to one second and bring the start to 100. 
Now your date should flicker in randomly. Go to your effects tab and search for glow. Throw it onto your date and change the threshold to 33, radius to 90, and intensity to 1. Select your motion design comp and create a scale keyframe at the beginning of your timeline. Move to 1 second and decrease it to 98%. Ease in and out. Click T on your keyboard to open the transparency property. Create a keyframe at 20 frames, then go back to the beginning of the timeline and drop it down to 50%. Ease in and out. Create a new black solid, and then right click in pre-comp. Call it vignette. Move it under your motion design layer, grab your shape tool, and create a mask rectangle around your text that edges out on the left and right sides. Under your mask settings, change add to subtract, change the feathering to 300, and make a path keyframe. Move to one second and change the height of the path and increase the feathering to 550. Last touch. In your effects tab, search for the Pixel Sorter 2 plugin and add it to your motion design comp. Set smooth to 25, trigger by maximum, sort by maximum, angle to zero, offset random to 100, cycle to two, feather end to 30, and blur to 30. Bring your playhead to 25 frames and create a threshold keyframe at 0.75. Then move to 1 second and 5 frames and change the threshold to 0 0.06. Now select all of your layers, right click in pre-comp and title this Phantom Liberty. Now let's create our main title. Go to Layer, New, Solid and use this hex code for our red background. Drag your dotted texture onto the timeline above your solid. Change the blend mode to multiply, transparency to 14% and scale to 33%. Drag your glitch image on top of your dot layer. Unlink the scale and adjust the x-axis to 98 and the y-axis to 45. Go to your effects tab and search for levels. Change the input black to 5 and the input white to 20. Go back and search for invert. Drag it onto your glitch image. Now create a new solid with this hex code. Change the blend mode to multiply. Duplicate the glitch layer and select the bottom glitch layer and the yellow solid. Right click and pre-comp. Title it yellow drip. Change the comp blend mode to linear dodge and change the copied glitch layer to overlay. Almost done with the background. Create a new white solid. Title it black bars. Go to your effects tab and search for your favorite fractal noise. Change fractal type to max, noise type to box, contrast to 450 and brightness to a negative 100. Under the transform settings, unlink the scale and make the scale width to 20 and the height to 2900 and complexity to nine. Duplicate the layer. Take your pen tool and create a triangle mask on your first black bar layer. Then on your second, change the position slightly and make another bordering triangle. Change their blend modes to multiply. And we have our background. Go back into your Phantom Liberty comp and copy your cyberpunk text with a fractal noise solid and paste it on top of your new background, changing the text color to this yellow. Before I forget, delete your levels and invert effects off your glitch image. Then drag your character image file on top of the cyberpunk text. Now for our subtext. Create a new text layer. This should be titled the same as your Phantom Liberty text. Choose the A4 speed font, tracking to zero, font size to 60, and the color to this middle gray. Create another text layer. This should be the same date as before. Choose the TT OctoSquare condensed light font, font size 35, 300 tracking, center your font, and drop it down to the bottom. Now for our box text. Type out your title and use the same cyberpunk yellow with the TT Octo Square Condensed Regular font. Font size 28, tracking 400, and place it in between our date and Phantom Liberty text. Let's start with our Phantom Liberty text animation. Head to your effects tab and search for tint. Apply it to your text layer. Change the black map color to this middle gray and the white map to this red. Go to one second, five frames on your timeline and create an amount tint keyframe at 100%. Move the playhead to one second, 25 frames and move the amount to zero. Go back to your effects tab and search for chromatic aberration. Drag it onto your layer and leave the settings as is. For your box text, we're going to repeat the random opacity animation like we did earlier. Create a start keyframe at one second, 15 frames and move the start to 100% at 215. Go to your effects tab and add a glow effect. Threshold 33, radius 33, and intensity 1. For our text border, grab your pen tool and begin making a rectangle around your text with wedge edges. Change the fill layer to none and stroke to 3. Right click and pre-comp. Title it yellow bar. Grab your pen tool and begin creating a mask around your border in sort of a horseshoe shape. 
Once you can see the entire border, create a mask path keyframe at 215. Head to 2 seconds and move the mask about halfway around the border. Then move to 115 and compress all of the mask keyframes to make the border disappear in the middle. This should give you a quick appearing border around your text. Copy the glow effect from your text onto your border comp. Now select all your layers except the Phantom Liberty comp, right click, and pre-comp. Title this Cyberpunk Main. Now for our main animations. Go to your effects tab and search for Pixel Sorter 2 plugin again. Add this to your Cyberpunk Main comp and angle to 180. At one second on the timeline, create a threshold keyframe at zero, then move two seconds and increase to one. Go back to one second again and open your opacity properties. Create a keyframe at zero, move to one second 15 frames and increase to 100. And now our two titles should transition pretty nicely. Open your scale settings using S and at one second 10 frames, create a scale keyframe. Move to six seconds and increase to 102% for a slow zoom. Now for our final glitch. Create a new white solid, title it Glitch. Go to your effects tab and grab Fractal Noise one more time. Change to Max and Block, then Contrast to 210, Brightness to negative 190, and Complexity to 6. Under Evolution Options, I'll click the random seed timer and input this expression, wiggle open parenthesis 10 comma 1 close parenthesis. Click the layer to close the expression window, and you should now have this glitch effect going on. Under the scale settings, uncheck uniform scaling and adjust the height to 66. Right click and pre-comp, title it glitch. Uncheck the eyeball and create a new adjustment layer. Go to the effects tab and search for displacement map. Drag it onto your adjustment layer and change the displacement layer to glitch, horizontal displacement to negative 28 and vertical displacement to negative two. Change both tabs to luminance and check off wrap pixels around. Grab the edge of the adjustment layer on the timeline and drag it to start at 2 seconds 12 frames. And you should now have a glitch shift with some flickering artifacts on your comp. And you're finished. Even though I'm really happy with the result, this is probably the most difficult tutorial I've uploaded so far. But it really does show the amount of layering and detail that goes into creating these professional looks. I hope you learned something today and can't wait to see you in the next one.